People with HIV can no longer be criminally prosecuted for exposing someone else to the virus without their knowledge. This makes Illinois the second state to repeal such a law, this one from the 1980s, making HIV exposure a felony. Advocates say the law discouraged testing and treatment for HIV and that this repeal is long overdue. Joining us now with more are Timothy Jackson, the Director of Government Relations with the AIDS Foundation Chicago and the lead lobbyist of the bill's repeal. And State Representative Carol Amons, a Democrat who sponsored the bill. Thanks to you both for joining us. Um, so, Timothy, let's start with you, please. What was your reaction to the governor officially signing this bill last week? Uh, thank you so much for having, uh, having us. Uh, emotions were all over the place, to be completely honest with you. Um, as a person living with HIV for nearly 12 years, um, I, there was anxiety, there was joy. Um, there were a couple of tears, um, but mostly it was really uh, a, a weight lifted off of, of my shoulders and, and for shoulders of people living with HIV across Illinois, that they won't have to worry about their health condition being weaponized against them. And so uh, for that, I am eternally grateful to Representative Ammons and Senator Peters and Governor Pritzker and others uh, for their work in, in advancing the legislation. And Representative Amons, why did you want to be a part of this legislation? I think Timothy really expressed that. And thank you so much for having me on about this bill. Uh, this bill really reflects uh, something that shouldn't have been on the books in the first place, but we needed to correct the wrong of the historical record when it came to people living with HIV. And so I wanted to be a part of that. I have a long legislative record of um, criminal justice reform. I found this to be not just criminal justice reform, but this is also healthcare justice in the face of COVID. And so uh, I think it was high time that Illinois took the lead on this initiative. And I'm so happy that we uh, got it signed last week and that the governor saw the importance of this legislation. And Timothy, how did, uh, how did this particular law and you know laws like it, how do they impact people who are living with HIV? Yeah, there, there are a number of different harms of which one, it's not based on current science uh, because right now there's a thing called U equals U, which stands for undetectable equals untransmittable, which means a person living with, uh, with HIV with an undetectable viral load, they pose zero risk in transmitting the virus. Um, and so obviously that, that is a huge boon for people living with uh, HIV. We understand that it's overly harsh and discriminatory to the same communities that are already ravaged by HIV, Black, Latinx, Indigenous, and LGBTQ communities. Um, but more than, than all of those is it inflicts harm um, and also stands in the way of public health strategies because a person could have been charged with this law um, if they didn't know they had HIV. Um, and so people literally told us well, I'm not going to get tested for HIV because I can be charged with this crime. And so obviously we understand that stands in complete contrast to what we want to happen. We want to encourage people to get tested and, and get into treatment. And so having something on the books that stood in the way of us doing that um, was obviously a, a huge uh, barrier to ending the HIV epidemic here in Illinois. And let's get into a little bit of that. An analysis of Cook County court data by the circuit shows that black men make up more than two thirds of the people charged under this law and across gender lines, 75% of those charged are black. Um, and that's the circuit that also comes from the Chicago Reader. Timothy, why have black people been disproportionately impacted by this law? Yeah, that's a great question. It, it's really um, just another example um, of systemic racism. Um, I think Representative Ammons uh, highlighted that not only is this a criminal justice issue, this is a healthcare justice issue as well. Um, and, it, and it's something that we have really seen where, uh, where you have disproportionate impact um, in a number of different areas. Uh, there is not just Chicago or Cook County centric, one out of every two gay black men in this country will contract HIV in their lifetime based on the CDC, 50%. And, and just to kind of put it into, you know, just really broader terms, you're looking at that statistic. I am a gay black man living with HIV. Um, and so that just really kind of puts into, uh, really in, into kind of focus of 
the importance of making sure that we remove this law and that we really focus on education, prevention, and treatment, not and, only in the black community, but Latinx community and, and others as well. And Timothy, you've said that, you know, to your knowledge, to your knowledge, uh, no one is currently in prison uh, for this law, but uh, there's some other data um, from Cook County that says that uh, from 1990 to 2016, 60 people were yeah. charged. Um, Representative Ammons, what does that say to you about this law? The number of people who've been charged, the number of people who've been uh, imprisoned? You know, this this really tells me that we are on the right track. You know, if we know that 50%, that includes my own family members, my own son, I want to make sure that he has every opportunity afforded to him to get good quality health care and to not, in the event that he may contract HIV or my daughter, for that matter, could contract HIV or a child who could be born with it. We want to make sure that we don't have laws on the books that deny them their actual rights, as well as protecting their health status. It leads to unemployment, socioeconomic condition status changes, you know, discrimination. We don't want that to be uh, the outcome for a person who, in reality, has a health issue that really just need addressing. And so that's why this was so important to remove the stigma and remove the discrimination and remove the criminalization uh, for people who are living with HIV in our state. All right, and that's where we'll have to leave it. Uh, my thanks to Timothy Jackson and Representative Ammons for joining us. Thank you for having me.